sometimes the person will come to Christ based on your witnessing and yes I had an attraction for you but when them come to Christ them come to Christ and, and them fall in with somebody else what are you going to do stop, stop follow Christ And now for our featured presentation. Hi everyone, welcome to another conversation with, conversation with Elise. We miss you too. Um, if you're here for the first time, please remember to like, like the video and to subscribe if you have not yet done so. But yeah guys, um, it's been too long so we miss you too. Um, we are again ever so happy to hear from you um the comments have not been as much as we want but when we do get them we are grateful we are thankful and um we just want to say again a big thanks to everyone who has been our support and you know continue to share the videos continue to encourage others to to, to come on board the channel and be a part of the family right and so we just want to say again big 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 up to you guys and thanks again um tonight of course you'd have seen the topic we're going to be looking at um should you get baptized for somebody for a mate for a mate whether male or female no so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna examine that tonight now we know that not not everybody you know are are christians um not everybody has yet made it um will we'll make the decision to follow christ because everybody have a choice right so but for those of you or for those of us who have took on the decision to follow christ oftentimes as you know even as you know with a with a young or old persons we find ourselves in a position where we our heart goes out for somebody you know and we fall in love or you know we take a liking to somebody and it it takes on a life of its own and so you know as it were yeah we fall in love um then and of course you being a, a christian sometimes the, the it depends on where your where your where your focus is at you sometimes fall in love with somebody who is not a christian right and of course vice versa because you have persons who are not christians who will fall in love with a christian and of course that again goes to how you spend your time because yeah. the truth is yeah, if you spend your time with somebody long enough you know you will go you take a liking and you go to, you go to love that person um i remember watching the, the show king's ransom oh. and and the um the the, the the guy who kidnapped the two people um um was so uh, was so we kind of Taken aback, oh, the oh, oh, the both of them were the two persons. They were divorced. Were were they, were they divorced? They were yeah, they were divorced. Divorced, yeah. And they had them, he had kidnapped them because they were they were rich people. Kidnapped them and had the no stairs and thing. And they, they were two, ransom. yeah, for a ransom. And they were down there for the two of them. And they, every now and then, the, he, he got the two of them apart with each other. And <laughs> and so he eventually kept them so long together in one place that they at one point facing each other so they only have each other to converse with mm -hmm. so at in the beginning of course you have the whole story okay, michelle yeah yeah so, they start to like curse right. out each other but then when they realize they were captured and it's for real and they're together they spend so much time in the basement being back held in love with captive each other. so they fell back in love Right, so part of the story, story was that the more time you spend with someone, that's the more the if story. it's even your enemy, you will end up like loving the person. person. Yeah. So, yeah, irrespective of of of, of the person, um, or even whether gender, um, you know, 
um, religious background or none. If you spend time with that individual, you're going to go to love the person. All right. So, but should you, should a situation arise where you know an unbelieving friend or um, the person who you love is an unbeliever, should that person be back, get baptized because you know they, they they don't want to lose you? Should they get baptized for you, or should you get baptized for them? All right. Now, I tell you, the Bible the Bible is 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 our is I believe is our guide as we traverse this earth. Um, many times we may not follow it, follow it, follow it toe to toe, but I honest I believe that it has enough in it to give us guidance along the journey. And what I found, even in the scripture, the Bible speaks to something similar, not the exact thing. But something similar. And when look at 1 Corinthians 7, verse 13, and I'm going to read from, yeah, let me read from verse 12 for context here. It says, But to the rest, all right, let me read from verse 11. Um, no, I, I, <laughs> I for context, I, let me not, let me, I don't want, because if, if I read above, it's a different type of going going to. So let me start at verse 13. And the woman which had an husband that believeth not, and if and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. The, the verse up, at, at above speaks to um, a brother that had a other wife that is that is that believeth not, who is an unbeliever, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So Paul here now speaking from from his wisdom because he did say in verse 12 that but i not, to the rest speak i not the lord if any brother had a wife that that believe it not and she be pleased to dwell with him let him not put her away and verse 13 says and the woman which had an husband that believe it not and if he be pleased to if he be pleased to dwell with her let her not leave him Verse 14 says, For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Um, I'm going to read another section, but let us let us just I'll talk about that a little bit. So the situation is a different is different from you know you're falling in love with somebody but you're, you're not married. already in a situation right and one of the person you know accept the lord as savior say you're already in the relationship gotten married and everything as unsaved and the wife decide to go with you know to walk with the lord she gets saved she got saved so the grace is extended to her spouse and her children that's all I, that's the end of the <clears throat> well well, that is encapsulating all of it. But what I want to get is, is to even oh. go, go deeper. To say that oftentimes you find where, you know, as Michelle just uh, mentioned, they have one party who comes to the Lord, another party you know, just not, don't believe it. However, gotcha. the scripture is saying, well, if it is that that is the case, if the, if the fact that you're already married and you're willing to stay with your wife, even... <coughs> Even though she has decided to walk with the Lord, the Bible says, Paul is, in, Paul is saying to the church, let it stay together. But if you if you don't want to, if the, if the unbelieving husband or wife don't want to stay, then she can depart. Because and when she and when he or she departs, then the believing, the believer, the brother or sister is freed from that marriage and can move on. That's what the scripture is saying here. Now it is speaking of a situation that is existing, meaning no mind already, right? So the inner situation already, right? And this is Paul's advice to to that situation. If you're married already, and and it please, and it please either party to stay, then you can stay together, right? Now he he went down and, and said um and said is that for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife right. is sanctified by the husband. Now, I want to point out something here. Sanctification is not salvation. Sanctification simply means that the, the marriage 
is pure, the marriage is clean, God honors that marriage. That's what sanctification in this reference means. But everybody has to get their own yes, salvation. salvation. So grace is extended. Right? Everybody gets have to get have to know Jesus Christ and know God for themselves. So though the, because one party is is saved, whether the, 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 the male or the female, by virtue of that, that 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 person being a Christian, the marriage is sanctified and the children is not no longer seen as 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 unclean, but the children even that come from that union are considered holy, right? Now the other part that the scripture says, but um, but if the unbelieving, but if the unbelieving the part, this is the part I was, I was mentioning. Mm-hmm. If the unbelieving the part, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such case, but God had called us to peace. For what know, and this is the other part I want to touch on too. For what knoweth thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Because he's probably saying, if your husband is willing to stay with you, don't leave him. Even though he's not believe, he's not a, he's an unbeliever. Because Paul is saying, by your liberty, you can, but win, him. You can win him to Christ. All right? Let me read on, because we're going to go back to the original, the original, the original topic. Um, or, how, how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? Yes? So, either party, the part that is, that is saved, right, by virtue of their, of their salvation and their, their relationship with the Lord, the marriage is sanctified, right? Now, Paul is saying, by your liberty, you can bring that person to Christ. Your life can bring that person to Christ. So don't be in a rush to, to leave the man. Or condemn. Yeah, don't be in a rush to separate yourself from him because if, if you, say so for example, you're married, you're married for 10, 15 years or 10 years and now you have, you have, you have come to Christ as a man and you've come to Christ but your wife is an unbeliever. Don't be in a rush to say you went, you went divorced or later. No, if you live for 10 years together, it must have meant that boy, there was something that held you guys together, right? And Paul is saying, okay, know that you're safe if she's still willing to stay with you stay with your wife because the ultimate aim is that your life should be an example to lead her to christ and yeah. vice versa so it simply means you have to live right right you have to be an example it may be even a little more tedious than you but living for the lord is living for the lord yes and i think the first persons we should witness to any which way is our loved ones mm-hmm. those that you're living with you know, I know some person's situation are tedious and others. Live, live according to the word of God, and the Lord will do the rest. Mm-hmm. So back to so when you go back to the original the original topic. Now the thing is, there is no there is no scripture here that is speaking to a uh, uh, getting to know your type of relationship that God can sanctify anything like that. So if it is that you. Um, I've, you have taken a liking. So you're, you're, I'm, I say I'm the saved, the saved um, male, and I see a lady who's not saved, and I fall in love with her because of the, the communication, this time we spend, I'm falling in love with her. There's nothing in scripture that gives any form of solidity or any form of backing from God for that. Now, it, it simply means then that if it is that I like her and she likes me, right? I can't tell her in order for you to come get married to me or to come get baptized. Though it is said, it is said several mm-hmm. times by people, but I think maybe people say casually, you know, when some men approach. I think Christian ladies say that casually when unsaved men approach them, in order for you, you know, to have a chance with me, you have to come and know the lord mm-hmm. but in instance where that is hap- where that has happened wherein people meet each other sometime at workplaces on the street wherever you meet as we were saying in the beginning you spend a lot of time with someone and affection started to grow so in situation like that people have invited people to church because they know that okay 
he's interested in me you know maybe a little flirting or something whatever and it's you know so that to get in on a serious side now we're in the feeling is reciprocal and they invite them to church and in cases they do get saved but they end up married to other people <coughs> you know so it is a sticky situation also but i think the situation that we're zeroing on is where there's mutual feeling and now <coughs> both parties Pardon. realize that something has to has to happen because the person that is walking with the lord knows within his or herself that look I can't have a shocked up relationship. Mm -hmm. It has to be, you know, something that is done according to the, the, scriptures. the scriptures. So, you know, in situation they will pressure such a one will pressure the opposite party who is not saved that you have to go you have to get baptized, you have to come in and get baptized. And most of the time because that party wants to be with the person, they will come to church, but not necessarily for Christ. They will come because they cannot afford to lose their love interest. And when that happened a lot of time, they get baptized for the wrong reason. It wasn't about church or anything like that. They do the courtship, they end up getting married, and then it becomes painstaking because what? Now you're forcing that individual to live like you, to be have the same mindset in your faith when you also know that look here they just did it because they want to be in the new union so so basically no there are a lot of tests a lot of trials that you weren't ready for because you haven't done it with precept upon precept the way that it should be done um, in some cases, the person didn't come for the Lord, but they receive. Well, that's a win-win. They receive, you know, the Holy Spirit, and they decided to walk according to the, the Word of God. And that's a win-win situation. But in most cases, the person just come and after a while, them just stop going to church, got to get what they already, you know. Well, I'm not even going to go so far as they get to the money. They get a wife or get a husband. So they, 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 they don't deem it. Oh, sorry. They, they, Important. The, the, the point that the, 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 what I want to drive out, which Michelle mentioned, is the fact that, listen, anybody, if you if you find somebody that you're interested in and the person interested in you as a Christian, whether a male or female, you have to be the one to point them to Christ. Christ not to you and that's why it's always advisable not to not to go that route because it becomes it becomes your emotions versus what what is what you what is right and what you need to do right but all right let's fast forward it, it don't it, it is what it is if you tell a person that they must get baptized and then so you can get married to you you're running down a slippery slope because when you know who you who's in Christ and who have walked apart, you know what it takes when you're committed to the Lord and even though being, being a Christian, you can go through your trial and testing, but you have a relationship with the Lord. So when this trial and testing comes, you can still hold firm because you have a relationship with God. But if you impose or impress upon somebody to come and get baptized because they want to be with you and they don't know Christ and then get baptized and you say okay see you're baptized no no pastor you can't marry no I hope the pastor will use his wisdom and say no man give it time but some of the time people ignore even the pastor's wisdom yeah. and go ahead and get and get and, and get, get married yeah. and they know because the person baptized okay get married and then get married and when the trials come and the tribulation and the tests come, the person who don't know Christ will give the person who know Christ hell. Mm -hmm. Because they don't have nothing to stand upon. They don't have no, no Christ to stand upon. As far as I'm concerned. And it worse if you go ahead. It worse if that believer had compromised the relationship. Yes, so if you say give in yourself you already. Give in yourself and you just want to cover up. You want to cover up all that maybe you have done in secret, even mm -hmm. though God is the only just judge. But sometimes when that happens, it's more difficult for the person who's an unbeliever to have um, a clear mind and focus and um, to truly, 
you understand, agree or deem your faith to be of um, seriousness and importance. Mm-hmm. Because what happens most of the time is that because the thing have been compromised, the person now they just want to get in the union to be free to partake to partake yeah, to, to, that's beauty, to, beauty, to do whatever, they want to do, whatever to do. they want to do and you find that it becomes harder for the believer now to um try to get things straightened and the path that it should be at that point at in that time. point in time and then it becomes more work for such an individual mm-hmm. And then, if it is not done in uh, to the uh, sensible and conscious way of okay, you you have to understand that you also have put yourself in this situation, so you have to also move from a point of knowledge to understand that the situation that the unbeliever have come into, you understand where they are at in that situation and how to approach it. You understand that sometimes you cannot do it on your own. You have to be honest and maybe lead to a le- depend on a leader mm-hmm. or a good friend or someone yeah. to help you with the situation. But then you're going to be forced now to be honest. Yeah. Because God is a God of principle and transparency. So nothing can be covered up and um, pretends and all of that. So one thing is that God is going, God is going to do the truth. So first of all, you just have to let the truth, you know, be put out there. And it's not that it cannot be saved or it cannot turn around. It's just that it's going to take sincerity of the heart now, truth and sincerity and repentance. And then now, um, sometimes counseling because the person who is a father. Um, in an unbeliever, a person who is an unbeliever, they may just not see it as that important anymore to want to change how they are and the way they are living mm-hmm. because they have not got their prize and they don't see the big deal because we are married now, so that should have covered it. But the scripture that um, Cornell have read before is a scripture for those persons who were, were married before, were married before. Mm. they were both maybe unbelievers, unbelievers and mm. they were married before and now someone have found the truth and trying to walk in truth so then grace is covered they're covered by grace and their relationship is blessed and everything so you can understand now if that person who were already in the relationship from the beginning without Christ being in the center that okay they're disgruntled when I married you you never know the Lord and that is not what I wanted I don't want to be forced into it then if that person decides to walk away now then you're covered by God's grace and you can do what you you know you mm-hmm. want to do but for the believer to take on an unbeliever, which the Bible says it becomes an unequal yoke. And there you have the yoke. That the yoke is that you are going to the right and the other person is going to the left. And now all the tediousness is coming in and all the unnecessary obstacles and tug and wars and so forth. But is it that it cannot be saved? It cannot be restored. No, we're, we're not saying that. But the key thing is that two have to walk as one. So. But but it, but our aim though is is not is to say to you don't go that direction in in in, in at all because no. save yourself the trouble, save yourself the hardship save yourself because the we stress. we know and be mindful for, for for as long as we have we know that um the, that, that the attraction. Will will still be there, but the the the, the, the old this passion and desire to, to be with each other, it will it is gonna be at the peak when you when you meet each other and want to be with each other, and it went to taper off and probably level up level right. off, and if it levels off and you're both not in the same frame of mind, I know it's okay we we'll have to we we'll have to be there for each other and, and spice up with each other, then we have a problem because if the boat as Misha says both don't have the same mind and walking together in the same mind, they're going to have a problem. And most of the time, based on what we have seen over the years, 
the person who comes in because of somebody goes out. We have we have seen so many so many times happen in church that we know that is something that is, is that 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 is is real and it is and we now go around the bush. We know it's real and we're trying to help help somebody not to take a particular route because God knows what we want and in due time we just have to um, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and he will, he will have everything and everything that we need going forward. You understand me? Um, we know of persons who have who have, who have shared their testimony with us to say, well, you know, somebody they were in, they are in church or somebody like them. And in as much as the person did like them, all they consistently did was point them to Christ. Yes? Because the only way you say for example, you know, you see a nice young man or you see a nice young lady and then look and then have the qualities you're seeking. The truth of the matter is that you want to make sure that God is at the center, as Bishop said, God is at the center of that. So the only God can be the center of that, God has to be the center of that person's life. And when God is the center of that person's life, then then watch his tongue, because Michelle did mention it too. Sometimes the person will come to Christ based on your witnessing. And yes, I had an attraction for you, but when they come to Christ, them come to Christ and, and then follow with somebody else. What are you going to do? Stop, stop follow Christ? Yeah? No. Because you understand that this person, if it is meant to be, when they come to Christ, they will come and they will also still find that connection and attraction with you. Because it was already deposited in them that you will be the one they are going to be with. And know that they are in Christ, all it does is just solidify the point. So we are saying, just save yourself the trouble and, and, and you know, you're not in the position, save yourself the trouble. And if you're in the position, point them to Christ. Yeah, that is true. And my final note on this is basically, that's why in everything that we do as believers, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. Because nothing happened to us by chance. Yes. We should always say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Yes. And we can save ourselves some pain and yeah. Yeah. unnecessary yeah. hurt. Yeah. So again, Michelle and myself, we're going to talk it real as 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 it should be because the truth is, um, until Christ returns, until we are until we die, yes. we have to still live on the earth. And we can you we cannot not use experiences that we have had and seen of other persons and not help somebody is not to go on the same road. It's like it's like um they would say like if if shot if if fish tell us shot their Shad, sea bottom yes, don't go down. <laughs> believe it. Believe him. Right? You and we are look you know have to look experience it to see. And we are saying that based on our experience and over the years, we are saying there's a way to go about it. As a believer, there's no coverage when you shock up with somebody. There's coverage when you, if the two, if the two unbelievers are married and one gets saved, there's coverage from that. The marriage scripture is sanctified. But if you find somebody and you have a boyfriend and girlfriend and start doing a thing, there's no scriptural coverage for that. So the best thing to do is that if somebody's interested in you, video, point them to Christ. When they come to Christ, if it's you, then glad you. Christ will point them to you. And I think that's the best way to go when God is the one who's directing the whole show. Yes? So, um, we hope you get something from it. And if you know somebody who needs to hear, as we always say, send them the link, point them to the video. And of course, we are asking you now to partner with us. Uh, we need to get to a thousand subscribers and your, your input, your help is going to help us to get there. Alright? So, until our next live, until next upload, oh, we soon start back our lives. Don't worry yourself. We have, to really, we have not stopped, but we soon start the back. Alright? So until next upload our live, we're saying God bless. See you on the other side.